I would go put myself in rooms where people are more successful than I am. And I would use that to my advantage of I am new in the area and I am building a business here. I think that is such an advantage for the new network marketer too, to use, hey, I'm new to this. Can you help me out? That there is something about the new person in town that people want to support. They want to rally behind that. So I would use that to my advantage. I would I would go to as many places as possible that was filled with successful people and let them know I'm new to the area and I need their help. Welcome to MLM Nation, a podcast of leaders, by leaders, for leaders, hosted by Simon Chan. He's built a team of over 200,000 and is now a full-time MLM coach and trainer. So if you're ready to level up your business, join us now. Let's do this. ML Nation, this is Simon Chan. I'm fired up to bring our special guest today, Dana Cantera. Hey, Dana, are you ready to make it happen? I am ready, Simon. Dana Cantera was practicing medicine when she discovered network marketing in 2014. Today, she's a full-time leader and a top 10 income earner in her company. She now focuses on a holistic approach to breaking free from the patterns of this world, and Dana dedicates her life to empowering others to do the same. Dana lives in Houston, Texas, with her husband and three teenage kids. So welcome to the show, Dana. I've given everyone a brief intro, but please take you take us back to what you're doing and how did you discover network marketing? I'd be happy to. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am just so blessed to have found this industry, and it's so exciting to think back to how this all came to be. Um, going way back to before I even knew anything about network marketing, I um, ended up going into medicine um, mainly for the money. I grew up not with a lot of money. And so I just thought, well, you know, doctors make good money. And so I went into that. I didn't, I didn't want to be poor. And my dad had a lot of health issues. And so it was kind of a natural fit. I went into it and I just thought, you know, that was success. That was my ideal of what a successful person is. And so I got I got into it and initially I did I did love it. I'm a PA, a physician assistant, and I loved it initially and it it slowly became something where I realized I was spending a lot more time with my patients, uh with my patients' kids and not my own kids. And so that kind of unsettling it started to set in and I I just think that was such a blessing because I had this feeling that there just had to be something else out there. Um, and But I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what network marketing was. I, I didn't really pay attention to it because I was just so narrow focused on what I was doing. And so when it was introduced to me, it was literally at a time where I was very discontent with what I was doing. And I just think that that is a blessing. I know sometimes people in their life can just feel discontent and they think of it as a negative thing. At looking back, it was what I needed. I needed to be looking for something else. And so someone sent me a random message. I mean, it was not even a close friend, Simon. Someone sent me a random message on Facebook Messenger that literally just said, hey, you should look at this company. It looks like something you would like. I mean, it was the worst pitch ever. And that has been such a good lesson to me is you don't have to say all the right words to the right person. Um, and from from the outside, I looked pretty successful. Um, I, I didn't really need the money. I wasn't in a, a state of desperation financially. Um, and so that was another good lesson too is not everybody is looking to dig themselves out of a big financial hole. I needed I needed freedom and I needed time with my family. And so I'm just so thankful for that message for that person, you know, sending it to me. I kind of looked up the company and it, it was a startup company. Um so there wasn't a lot out there and that's good too cuz there wasn't a lot that I could figure out. I just said, "Okay, this looks like something I'm willing to try." And it it took off from there. So it it, it it taught me a lot of lessons on how I was pitched and kind of where my mindset was at the time to to know that you don't have to say the right words and there's not a perfect person out there. Don't discredit anybody. This Facebook message, uh, bad pitch, was this like a close friend or acquaintance or what type of relationship with that, with that person? It was an acquaintance, but not somebody that I did life with. Um, no, 
not somebody that I was very close to. We went to the same church. Um, but other than that, no, it was not a close friend and not somebody that I even saw on a regular basis in person. Thank goodness she didn't prejudge you and say, say that it, you didn't need the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, it was a he, but uh, exactly. I mean, it was just, I'm sure they were just sending out messages to whoever. You know, it's such a good lesson there because number one, it's about timing, right? Um, so always finding the right person at the right time. If the person messaged you maybe a little a couple of years earlier, you wouldn't be open, but you are at the right time in your life. And also sometimes people feel that, oh, uh, a guy messaging a woman, that's not appropriate, but thank goodness the person uh, re- messaged you. Or else you I'm wouldn't thankful. be having to live your life. Yep. I'm thankful every day that he sent that message. So you said you uh, took, things took off right away. Uh, how and why did things happen fast for you while well, you see a lot of people struggle? That was one. I didn't overthink it because I didn't know very much. <laughs> there, there wasn't a lot of information out there that I was that I had access to. It was a brand new startup. Um, When it was introduced to me, they were still kind of coming up with a name, which is a very unique situation to be in. And so I was just very excited about being part of something that I knew was the answer to my, my current situation. I knew this was the answer. And one thing looking back is I knew some people at this point I had known some people who were successful in this industry. And that was a blessing too, because that set my paradigm of, oh, so this is what you do to create freedom. And I just, I had not found the right company yet. And I don't think I was unhappy enough with my current situation. Just like you said, if this was pitched to me three years earlier, I wouldn't have had the pain point that I had at this point in time. And so I think the combination of, I knew what this could do because I knew, I mean, maybe three people, but those three people were successful in this industry. I knew people that had achieved what I wanted to achieve. And I was just very excited. I thought people were crazy not to say yes to me. So I didn't have any fear initially. Yeah. I think sometimes when we know too much, we overthink things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So things went pretty well. What was like a turning point or a light bulb moment for you when things really, really started to take off? So my background is in wellness and medicine. And initially, I tried to use that to my advantage because the company was a health and wellness company. And so I started off being the expert of all the ingredients and all the things because I was super impressed by it. My turning point is when I stopped selling the science and I started selling the hope and the opportunity that came with this industry. And that was hard. Um, I don't I don't think I had a big ego at the time, but letting go of the ego of, oh, I do know, I do know all the answers, but I'm gonna rely on the tools of this industry and the fact that I can't be the expert up there if I want to duplicate. That was the biggest turning point for me. And what somebody had told me, and this this was such a great lesson, is nobody buys a Louis Vuitton purse because of the way it's stitched. Now they buy it because of how it makes them feel, of just how they how they look when they're carrying it around. It's it's the emotions of buying one. And I don't own a Louis Vuitton purse, but I could relate to this. Nobody says, oh, tell me how it's stitched. Where is that leather made? They don't ask all of those things. Now, they may validate why they bought it, why they spent so much money with all those reasons, but it's the emotions behind it. So I had to really learn how to break away from the sciencey stuff that was part of my company and really sell the emotion of the opportunity. That is so good about Louis Vuitton because... Um... There are like fake Louis Vuitton bags that are almost not the same. But I'm sure those people who have those don't feel one-tenth the same as someone with a real bag. Not the same emotion. Yeah. And like I remember years ago when I was younger, um, like I was a big into sneakers like Air Jordans and Nikes. And then in China, you can get like fakes. This was like 30, 25, 30 years ago. Fakes that look exactly the same. And so I went out there and instead of paying 150, I paid like 20, 30 bucks. And I bought like five, seven pairs of them. In the different styles, like Air Max and all that. But when I came home, like I didn't really wear them because I felt like 
I didn't feel good about them, right? Right, right. It's yes, like it's all about the emotion. Yeah. The, uh, did you? Where did you get the aha moment? Was it an event, or how did you go from hey, I'm gonna, I need to pitch the business and sell the dream, and instead, um, it was from our CEO at the time. It was just so many great lessons because he was in the field before as a, as an associate or as an independent rep, and then he became the CEO. So we just took everything that he taught as like, this is how you do it because he had been there before. And that was so valuable to us. Um, because when, when I first enrolled there, the person that sent me that message, um, we had gone to our first business presentation meeting and uh, we, my husband and I, we were super fired up. We were like, Oh, this is amazing. So we called the guy that enrolled me on the phone and we were like, okay, what do we do next? Like we're in what, what's the next step? And he said, Oh, I don't know. I'm not really doing that thing. I signed up, but I'm working in my corporate job. And we were like, and then the person, because it was a startup, the person that was above him was an investor. And, and so we just were left. I mean, we were left at that moment of, okay, I guess we'll just figure this out on our own. And so that, that was another big aha moment of, okay, we have no upline. And, and that has really become, I, you hear it a lot in this industry of people saying, well, you know, my upline doesn't do this or my, you know, my, my sponsor doesn't help me with this. We had to figure it out from day one. So that was, that was never an issue with us because we didn't have anybody else to blame, but ourselves, like it was just up to us. And I, and I think that's the right mindset, turning a challenge into a strength. Right. Yeah. Like you were able to become a better leader. <clears throat> a lot of people say, Oh, I don't, my upline doesn't support me and they start getting that criticized blame mode. Well, you didn't have that, but that made you a better leader. It did. And it also made me realize I didn't like that feeling. I did not like the feeling of someone saying, I'm not doing this anymore and having to figure it out on my own. I mean, of course, we all want a great leader and we all want a great mentor. And it really stuck with me that. I didn't want to do that to anybody that I brought in. And I think that made me a better leader of just having experienced that and felt that and knowing I didn't want anyone else to feel that. So I'm going to have to step up my game so that when somebody does need to depend on me, even though I'm brand new to this and I don't know what I'm doing, I need to figure it out for everybody that comes after me. So it was not wanting to repeat that feeling in anyone else. That was a big learning lesson for me too. What would you say has made you successful? Like one of the one of your strengths that's helped you in this profession? Consistency with an unwavering desire to improve. I mean, I am consistent, but I am also very much wanting to make sure I'm consistent in the right things, and I'm always wanting to learn from somebody that's further ahead than me. And I mean, that's how I found your podcast early, early on, maybe a year or two into this, um, I found it. And that was so helpful for me because I'm, I'm consistent. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take a day off without doing this because I love it. And I believe in this profession, but I don't want to consistently be doing the wrong behavior either. And so I want to learn from people that maybe have better systems in place or a better mindset that have, that have gone through things and what they have learned from. So consistency for sure but I'm, I'm willing to kind of up my game consistently as well. So what is your routine like? You talk about consistent. What's your routine? I make sure that I do four things every day and I try not to set it to where I'm going to fail. Um, and I, I will celebrate when I do more. And that is doing some type of social media post whether it's a post or a reel or something, I stay active on that. So something with social media, reach out or make a new contact, follow up with somebody and do something for personal development. Because those four things in my mind, if done consistently over time, I'm going to get some results, but they're not overwhelming for me. I mean, there are some days where I'll, I'll make 10, 20 new contacts and I, I'm going to celebrate that. But if you were to say you need to make 20 new contacts every single day, that would be that would be overwhelming for me and I do this full time. So I 
I do those four things. And once I do those four things, I consider it a win. And then everything else above that is bonus. So what's your routine like in the morning? In the, uh, what, what, when do you wake up? And then when do you do your post? When do you do your reach outs, follow ups? And then you got three kids too. So how do you balance all that? I do have three kids, but I'm at an exciting point right now because I also have a driver. So um, that changed a lot of things is my oldest is now driving. And so even though I have three teenagers, I have a little bit of time back because of that. So my routine has changed up a little bit in that it doesn't completely revolve around them all the time. But I would say my routine is when I get up in the morning, I'm setting my mind on something positive. I will write some, I'll write down something I'm grateful for, something I'm going to do to make progress in my business that day, and something that I am going to do to be significant in the life of someone else. So gratitude, progress, significance. That's how my day starts. Um, I will do some type of physical exercise in the morning. Um, like we were talking about before I'm fully awake, I will usually get that out of the way because then that's just a check. Um, and then my day is either spent meeting with people, you know, doing something online, getting through those four DMOs. And then in the afternoon, it's usually kids, it's kids activities. And so I don't do a ton of stuff, say after three or four, purposely just to be available for my kids, because that was the whole reason why I started this industry. And I don't want to ever forget that. It's very easy for me to continually make the sacrifices of time to reach higher ranks. And that there's part of me that that's very compelling. I'm very competitive. And so um, I also have to remember why I started this and the lesson that I want my kids to see. And I want them to see that they have a mom at home, a working mom who is at home, which is such a, a funny term. We don't ever say working dad, but uh, a working mom that is at home uh, that gets to show up to all of their things. And that was really important to me because I still remember a time in my life where that was not possible. I had to say no to my children so I could say yes to my employer's schedule. So usually in the afternoon, it's kid time. And uh, you mentioned about uh, the gym time and uh, we were talking before that. But, you know, I was like, I should I should have mentioned that until we start recording. But for those who don't know, I mentioned on the last episode with Justin Prince where uh, we were, I was working out with Justin Prince and I saw this and Justin's like, oh, look at the impact you're making, Simon. Like what? Look at that lady. And this lady was on the uh, bike and you can see her phone on the bike listening to ML Nation. So, you know, again, this is like... Um, I think this is a tip for helpful for people. Like uh, naturally, I was like, oh, I should say hi to this person. Thank you them for listening, right? And this was at a Ray Hickman event. Thank you for listening. But of course, I'm like, oh, I don't want to bother her. And you know, but then my mentor told me the two second rule. Once you think of something, within two seconds, you got to do it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to say hi, introduce myself. And I didn't know it was Dana right there, riding the bike and listening. And we had just met the night before. And then the funny thing, he just told me you didn't even know about who Justin was because right. he hadn't spoken on stage yet. That's right. That's right. And I'm so glad that you said hi. Yes. And I love that rule. I actually just finished your book. And I remember you mentioning that in there. And I thought that's a that's a great rule because we can way overthink things. And I think sometimes those little moments or pings, I call them pings, um, where it is it is God telling you, like, go do this thing. And when we overthink it, we're just blocking that blessing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was so great that you came over. It almost looks staged. I remember thinking about that, like, oh my gosh, I'm listening. I'm watching his podcast on my phone. And then you're right there in the gym, but it was awesome. And the, the thing is, I did not know it was you too. That was too cool. Right. And and I you, and you over, yeah, you're overthinking it. You're overthinking that uh, it's staged. But I don't even know it was you until I said hello to you. You turned to me. Like, hey, you look familiar. We met last night. Um, <laughs> right. But the two second round, I mean, used to, <clears throat> I used to go to events. And I, was, I would see someone I look up to. So oh, I want to say, take a selfie. We'll take a picture. I want to say, say, uh, just thank them. And all of a sudden, no, I'm bothering them. And then the, the person leaves. And the opportunity is gone. Right. Yeah. You and it. I think a le lesson for everyone is like, we always think of things we have to follow up. I mean, you think about like, when you think of someone that you need to follow up with, what do you do, Dana? Send, I'll send them a text and just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. How are you doing? And, yeah. and I will tell you that probably half the time they will say, oh my goodness, I was just about to text you. Now, whether or not they were, 
But I've had people do that to me too, like send me a message and say, for some reason, I was just thinking about you. And probably, I mean, five times out of 10, I am in the middle of a text to them. So it's like, don't overthink why you're thinking about somebody or why you think you should do something because we're all humans. And I think that's an important thing to remember too. I remember being a nobody in my network marketing company and I know where I'm at now. I We're all humans and we're all like have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of fear doing different things. Otherwise, like this podcast of yours wouldn't be so popular. You're hearing people that have failed and risen from it and the lessons that they have learned. And you just listen to enough of those and you go, oh, we're all the same. We're just at, we're at different levels of learning. So we really shouldn't be. And honestly, like if you do go approach somebody and they think that you're super weird or whatever, then that's probably a sign too, that they're just not a good connection for you. You know, if that energy isn't matching up, then maybe that's something to pay attention to too. You know, that's so true. Because all the people that I went, went up to, they've never, I've never gotten a feeling that I was bothering them or was rude. Right. Right. And if they were, then they're probably, if they were the 1% that actually was, then they're not the person that you should have in your life. Right. Yeah. And the like, true colors come out. Like if, if you some you look up to someone, right, right. and then you go up to them and they become a total jerk to you, then you shouldn't look up to them. They're, they're, the real personality comes out. That's yes, a good pay, yeah. Pay attention to people's actions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think when you have someone in your mind and you don't reach out to them, you don't feel good. Right. That's and I've true. done that in the past. You don't feel good. Like you, 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 you wanted, we've always done that before. I'm sure you have where, oh, I should reach out to the person and you didn't. And then you think about that person again and you still have it. Right. And that yeah. self esteem seems to go down. And in this profession, you need as much self esteem and confidence as possible. <laughs> that, that is so true. And you only, you know, so many people will say, oh, I, I wish I was more confident. You only gain confidence. Through action. You can't gain confidence by reading a book or listening to motivational things. Like confidence comes from being bold, like getting out there and doing something, irregardless of the outcome. That increases confidence. And so, and you need that in this industry. You totally do. So you have to do it through action. I think that's going to be the title of this podcast How to Get Confident. Because most people are not confident. They're waiting for success to happen before they become confident. They don't realize that. Taking action increases that confidence. And the more action you take, it compounds, right? Well, more- it's, you're right. And it's, it, it really is, it's, a, it's backwards to a lot of professionals, how they were trained. So for me, I went to school, then I had to go through clinicals. I mean, there were so many things that happen before you're allowed to touch a patient. You know, you have to sit through your boards, you have to pass a test. And then you're allowed to take action. And this industry is so flip-flopped in that you take action first, then you're going to learn, then you might take some higher level course, but you're taking action all along the way. And so we have to kind of rewire how the order that we do things, because that's the only way that you're going to become a confident leader or approach someone with confidence is actually doing it. And, you know, we, I talked to several professionals, not just those like in the medical profession, but so many professionals that were trained that other way. You get all your training first, then you're allowed to take action. And yeah. it's, it's really hard to flip flop that, but it has to be opposite here. Well, it's like, that's the way we're conditioned in school, right? You cannot right. go to high school until you finish junior high. You cannot go that's to right. college until you finish get a high school degree. Or you yeah. cannot go to med school until you finish graduate from undergrad. But here, right. you just start at, almost like you start being that doctor without actually getting a degree. And you learn, right. you learn. So here's a question. You may have to think about this one. What was an example where you took action? And because I'm asking this question because a lot of people are like, they're studying mode, study. I got to be training, training, training. And when I date them, when I know everything, then I'll go out and do it. Right. And then they end up never doing anything. What was an example where you learned a lot by taking action and you learned something that you never would have thought or oh, all the trainings was never covered? Well, I think because I didn't have anybody above me to rely on that I knew that if we wanted to actually be successful, I had to start doing business presentations. I didn't have anybody to learn from. I had to start you know, talking to people, I, I had to be the one to start doing these things. And then eventually I would be 
asked to give a presentation or asked to speak on stage. And those things still happen. And I am still nervous and scared every single time it happens. But I continually say yes every time. You hear so much of people, and I, and I agree there are things you need to say no to to be successful. But I think a lot of my success and confidence comes from I just say yes first. I, I say yes to things that I know I'm supposed to be doing rather than, oh, I'm scared. I don't want to do it. I will still be scared either way. I'm, I'm, I still feel that coming in, but I will say yes when given the opportunity to do something that I know I'm supposed to do. And I don't, I don't overthink my answer. I'm very quick to make decisions. Um, and then I'll, I'll gain confidence along the way. So whether, whether it's asked to, you know, do a zoom for somebody or give a presentation, that's where, that's where confidence comes from. But I'm, I can't say I'm confident all the time before it, it comes with time. You said something important. You, you don't overthink decisions. There's something that, uh, one of my mentors told me that successful people make quick decisions, but then they don't change the decision. Yes. Yes. While I most people, that. they take forever to make a decision. And once something doesn't go well, they change that decision. Yeah, there I have one. Thankfully, I've always been that way. And I feel like God blesses us with skills and talents that, you know, do do set us apart. There are a lot of things I need to work on. and But that is one thing that I am. I am good at. I will make decisions quickly and I will stick with them. Um, I have a very strong sense of responsibility. So if I say yes to something, I'm going to do it. And it wasn't until years in the industry where I did hear that quote. And it was such a good reminder of, okay, so there are some things that I do that have made me successful. And I need you, you need to stick with those. I think sometimes we can get in this, you know, personal development thing where we're like, oh, we need to change all of these things. But it's also so important to realize what are the things that have made us successful or made us consistent or made us not drop out when others have dropped out. And that that is one of them. I will make decisions quickly. We talked about the learnings and taking the action. Um, what was one of your worst presentations you did? Or like an embarrassing <laughs> moment, but you learned a lot from it. I think any time that equipment doesn't work. So I've had presentations where the room has horrible acoustics and I'm shouting. I've had presentations where the AV equipment doesn't work. Um, I've done presentations where the, I mean, I live in Houston. We've had like hurricanes come in and just trying to get around it. And at the moment, it is not pleasant. But at the moment, I always try to tell myself, this will be a funny story you will tell from stage. And mm. that is always, I've tried to remember that even listening to, even listening to MLM Nation early on, I listened to it for encouragement, but I also listened to it thinking, how will I answer that question when I'm on that stage? Which I think is so cool that we're here now because I have thought through those things like, oh, what would I say to that? And so I've had a lot of a lot of things not go well, but people in the room are looking at how you handle those things too. So <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm like, okay, so we can still do this. Like, you know, you don't have to have this stuff to do this presentation. And sometimes those failures that other people see increases their confidence. I love hearing about stories of how people failed in, in some aspect and how they rose out of it. Cause you're like, okay, then what I'm going through isn't that bad. And, and that, that is super encouraging to me. So since you know these ML Nation uh, podcast questions so well, here is my favorite question. You know, um, what was your worst moment in network marketing to the point you maybe even wanted to quit, but you didn't quit? Oh, yeah. I, th I think if I had had an easy thing to fall back on, this probably would have been it. It was a, a couple years into this. So I had already walked away from the practice of medicine. I'd been doing... Um, network marketing full time and had two two pretty big leaders um, and they were building and it was so great. I mean, oh, they're doing work and this is growing. Um, one of them decides to quit rather abruptly due to uh, due to not even a company thing. It was it feel due to feelings being hurt by other people. 
And then my other big, big leader went through a divorce and filed bankruptcy and said, I, I need to take just a time out. And that was it. That was my whole team, Simon. Like those were my two. And it happened within a month of one another. And it was at that moment that I had to decide if I have to start from zero, am I willing to do it? Do I believe in this industry enough? Do I believe in this company enough? Am I willing to start from zero? Now, I didn't thankfully have to start from zero because I had a, you know, a few people here and there. But I also thought there are people coming into this company today. They are starting with zero. Mm -hmm. They have excitement. They are, they are going to build. So I'm actually a little bit ahead of those. I had a little bit of volume left over, but I had to make the decision and I had to ask myself, if I had to start from zero, am I willing to do it? And the answer was yes. It, and it was one of those things too, that I said, I'm going to show people that you can do it. Cause I think most people thought I would quit that that's pretty devastating to just take all of that away. Cause it's not just taking volume away. It was taking away emotions. It was taking away some friendships. It was taking away the momentum we had built. So that was tough. That was my most difficult moment. And in a startup company, there's always frustrating things. So there's, you know, there's sprinkles of frustration in there, but that was it. When when what I thought was going to happen didn't happen in in a, in a very short period of time. I'm sure that was a really good time for you to grow your leadership, right? Like you can study with the leadership books, but like actually doing it. And we always say, like we teach our downline, just starting from scratch. This is what you do. Yep. So now you get to show them exactly what you do. Right. And that's an important lesson today. No matter how big you know, your organization is, you're always growing a new team. That is the best advice that I have heard multiple times is as a leader, when you feel stuck, you feel like nobody is doing anything. Your team's giving you all that they're going to give you. What's the best way to motivate them? You know, that's always the question. And the answer is grow a new team, like let them see you do it, grow a new team. So it, it's almost the mindset that you have to have every day in this business is you're, you got to consistently be willing to grow a new team. Yeah. I, I think, um, cause the team is not stupid, right? If you see like, oh, Dana, these are the same people on the zoom, same people over there. Dana's not recruiting. The team's not growing. It doesn't help them with the belief. Right. No. Uh, and no matter how much training you're telling them, it doesn't get them going because oh, Dana's just saying that because she wants us to work. Right. But yeah. if they see you building the, Oh my goodness. Data just added five new people. Oh, it's just, and then they see you at ranking. They see you getting awards. That builds their belief. That's the only thing that really gets them to take action. That's what what they see. Yeah. And people want, people do want somebody to root for. Um, And so I think that that's important too, is them seeing that you are still doing those things. And that's really important to me too. I don't ever want to be in the position to where I'm not still on those boards where they're not seeing my name, not for my own ego, but just to show them that you never run out of people. You never get to a position to where you stop doing the basics and everything that's being trained on I'm doing. And I'm always looking for better ways to do it too. But yes, I'm always in the arena. I think that's the Theodore Roosevelt has the the man in the arena. Um, And I, I love that saying of just, it, it starts off, I don't know the whole thing, but it's not the critic that counts, but the honor belongs to the man that's actually in the arena. And that's how I feel is I will always be in the arena because I want to make sure what I'm training on and what I'm doing is actually working. Awesome stuff. Hey, I could talk to you forever, but we got to wrap up. <laughs> okay. Uh, some quick questions to pick your brain and you know these questions. <clears throat> First one is, what is your favorite success quote that motivates you? Romans 12.2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I think that's network marketing 101. What is one habit that's helped you become successful? Consistency, for sure. And I feel like everyone says that and it cannot, it cannot be oversaid is consistency. What's the best piece of advice you ever received? Never miss an event that mm. is that I heard early on. And it just became a truth that that became a truth. I don't ever think, how am I going to get there? Who's going to watch the kids? Who's going to watch our pets? You know, there's so many factors. It's never miss an event. 
What's your favorite prospecting tool? Say you have a qualified prospect. Do you uh, get on the phone with them? Do you do Zoom? Do you send them a video? Uh, do you do a face-to-face? What do you like to use? I like to send them a video because it's duplicatable. So I'll send them a quick video and then I will follow up with them afterwards. If they're local, I love meeting people in person. So I'll do that. Otherwise, um, I utilize Zoom a lot now just so I can see their faces. Um, but I'll follow up after that some way one-on-one. What's your favorite app on your phone that's not a social media app? Not social media is probably Marco Polo. Have you heard of that app? Yep. I love that. And I think it's because I can see their face. I can see people's faces when I'm hearing from them. What are two or three books that you could recommend to ML Nation? My favorite all-time book is Extreme Ownership. Mm -hmm. I think that just creates such freedom and such such positivity when you can just take complete ownership of everything. There's no blaming. There's no anything else. And it fires me up too. It's it's motivating and it's just such great advice. So extreme ownership. Um, early on network marketing wise, GoPro was the first book I read by Eric Ware. Um, and then your first year in network marketing by Mark on L. Those two books were my upline early on. So I would definitely recommend those, even though they're, they've are they been written a while ago. Um, I would recommend those for somebody new in network marketing. And here's the last question, the million dollar question. You ready? I'm ready. So imagine you had to start all over again and you knew no one, but you didn't know your husband, you didn't know your kids. You're like an alien that went to another planet, but you had all your current knowledge, skills, and wisdom. What's the first thing you do or the first place you go to find prospects and build a network marketing business from scratch? I'm going to go to networking groups, but networking groups where people are entrepreneurs, they're they're business owners, they're they're already successful people. I'd probably go to um, even some higher end like political events, just things where people have the mindset that I know would make this this industry have value from. Um, I would go put myself in rooms where people are more successful than I am. And I would use that to my advantage of I am new in the area and I am building a business here. I think that is such an advantage for the new network marketer to to use. Hey, I'm new to this. Can you help me out? That there is something about the new person in town that people want to support. They want to rally behind that. So I would use that to my advantage. I would I would go to as many places as possible that was filled with successful people and let them know I'm new to the area and I need their help. As we wrap up, any last words or advice? And then what's the best way our listeners can connect with you? My best piece of advice is just stick it out. Do whatever it takes to get into the rooms that have people to encourage you. Um, If you have a great upline or mentor, that's such a blessing, but put yourself in situations either through podcasts or books or events to where you have people cheering you on uh, because they're out there and that will keep you going in this. And then um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I think I'm the only Dana Cantera on there, um, but it's Dana dot Cantera, K-A-N-T-A-R-A on both Facebook and on Instagram. And my mission, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, you may hang out with Dana Cantera. So keep up the momentum and go to mlnation.com, click on the podcast tab, and you see the show notes to Dana and the links to her profile. Definitely go follow her on social media. She got good stuff on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, you can reach out to her. In order to be successful in life, in business, and in network marketing, you must help others. So Dana, thanks again for sharing your valuable time with ML Nation. We're grateful to you. And we appreciate you for having a positive impact on millions of distributors worldwide. Thank you so much again, and God bless you. Thank you, Simon. Hey, I'm our nation, Simon Chandler. Great show from Dana Cantera. Awesome stuff. And we talk about how to get confidence. Right? How do you get confidence in this profession? It's by taking action, right? You're never going to know it all. And you're never going to, because whatever can happen, a lot of things that can happen, you never know, right? So if you don't get into the, You know, what Dana talked about, like study, 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 learning, learning more, you take action, that two-second rule, right? When the second she thinks about something, she takes action immediately. Those are are big keys to success. 
everyone. Like most of you, if you, uh, you know, we all have a prospect list. The more you think about them and don't reach out to them, your self-esteem and confidence goes down. And in this profession, you definitely need that confidence. So go reach out to the people you need to. Take that two-second rule. Um, you know, prospecting is about, there's a lot of aha moments here. Timing. Timing. So that's why you can't overthink. So the person sounds the worst Facebook pitch, but she joined anyway because timing. Right. The person also did not overthink, say, Oh, Dana's is a physician. She looks great. Great family lives in a great neighborhood. No, they just sent out the message. Remember, your job is not to convince people. Your job is simply to collect a decision. It's not to make the decision for others. It's to collect a decision. Right. I'm going to repeat that again. Your job is not to make a decision, but to collect that decision. So don't say, Oh, this person is not good. They don't need the money or they're. Just go and reach out to them, and you never, never know. Because a lot of times when you overthink, the person you think will join, they're not going to join. The person you think will buy, who needs it, may not. But the person you least expect, someone like Dana, she was open, right? Because initially she loved her job. It's when she became a mother, she didn't have the flexibility and time for uh, the freedom. That's when she was open. So don't prejudge. Uh, going to events are so important. Events, that's why Dana and I met at an event. We met at uh, Ray Higgins' Faith Over Fear event. Um, going to the events, connecting, connecting with people because that's when you keep the emotions, your your fire, your you never. And I'm actually about to go to another event in uh, in two weeks from now. It's like you got to make the time, okay? Don't tell me you don't have the money, don't have the time. Make go to the events because you never know when your breakthrough is going going to be. And what she talked about, she had that breakthrough when she was at that event, right? And learned it from that CEO that. It's like, uh, and where, where was the notes at here? Um, where it's like the Louis Vuitton, right? Like you got to be authentic, right? You ch- change from selling to, it's, it's not just selling the product, it's selling the emotions, the emotions of fulfillment. So if you become like a product expert, yeah, you can get customers, but you may not get people to join the business. Also, people don't believe they can do what you're doing. You understand you're selling something, you're selling a dream, you're selling the emotions behind the dream, and that you can take help people take that dream. And if you don't have the confidence, hey, go take action. Go surround yourself, right? And when you surround yourself with better people, you, that dream becomes bright. It's alive. That's why you go to events. Like most of you listening, your friends, your family, the people you spend time with, the people at your job, they're not in network marketing. So the dream bits dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And then you lose hope in that dream. That dream fades. But when you go to events, when you listen to this podcast, when you're pouring yourself self-development, that dream becomes real again. It's a constant fight. You you have to know that we're marking a constant mindset fight, whether you can or cannot. Um, you know, Dana share her routine, right? There's non-negotiables. I think that's something that you should go back and listen to. Doing social media posts, doing reach outs, doing follow-ups, and doing personal development every single day. Um, hey, I think that's why I'm going to share with you so many good uh, nuggets here. The word worst moments, but just be, you know, having the attitude, unstoppable attitude. I'm going to make it happen. It doesn't matter. You going to have challenges? Yes, it will. But you're going to be unstoppable. You're going to be that leader. And if you want to motivate your teams, go take action yourself. Best way to motivate is for you to grow your business. And when your business is not growing, your downlines know you're not doing much. That doesn't motivate them. Instead, focus on growing yourself, taking and leading and setting. The example. Hey, I'm Simon Chan. Thank you for listening. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this again. These podcasts are not free. It takes a lot of my time. It takes a lot of Dana's time to set it up. Uh, make sure you sub- follow her on, so- on go to mlnation.com. The link to her social media profiles are there. Go follow her and subscribe to this on the podcast. Also, head over to our YouTube channel. We've got a lot of other goodies as well. Just make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Anyway, that's what I got. I'm Simon Chan. I'm loud and proud to be a part of this amazing profession. Now it's over to you. Make sure you take action and apply so that you can have a positive impact on someone's life. God bless you all. Have an amazing day.